Hi, I'm James Lowe. And I'm Justine Murphy, and this is Light Matters for April 23rd, 2014. On this week's show, adaptive optics enhance subcellular imaging, a two-stage laser could control rain and lightning, panels redirect sunlight into shadowy urban areas, and Laura Marshall tells us about last week's vision show in Boston. A new adaptive optics approach can sharpen microscope images for biologists studying zebrafish. The technique, developed by a team at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute's Genelia Farm Research Campus, rapidly corrects for distortions in transparent, non-scattering tissues at the millimeter scale without exposing them to damaging levels of light. The researchers use this new technique to bring into focus the fine branching structures and subcellular organelles of nerve cells that are deep in the living brain of a zebrafish. Without adaptive optics, such structures remain blurry and indistinct under the microscope. The technique involves two-photon excitation and takes its cues from laser-induced guide stars used to correct for atmospheric turbulence in astronomy, as well as descanning methods used to average out motion-induced errors in retinal imaging. The researchers shined their own type of guide star across areas of tissue and the returning light was analyzed by a wavefront sensor to determine what optical corrections were necessary. The adaptive optics compensated for spatial variation in aberrations and recovered diffraction-limited imaging over large volumes, more than 240 millimeters per side, with a 14 millisecond update rate. The research was published in Nature Methods. It might soon be possible to use lasers to control the weather. A team from the University of Central Florida College of Optics and Photonics and the University of Arizona is now developing a technique to trigger rain and lightning in clouds with a high-energy laser beam filament. Water condensation and lightning activity in clouds are linked to large amounts of static charged particles. Stimulating those particles by pointing a laser at a cloud could allow scientists to activate rain showers and potentially even lightning. The researchers have discovered that surrounding a laser beam with a second beam creates an energy reservoir that can sustain the central beam over long distances. This second dress beam helps prevent the dissipation of the primary, higher intensity beam. Alone, that primary beam breaks down and its reach is limited. Using their new technique, the researchers have demonstrated the ability to control the length of the filament and were able to extend the laser pulse from 10 inches to about 7 feet. Other potential applications for the new technique include guiding microwave signals as well as long-distance chemical sensors and spectrometers. The research was published in Nature Photonics. Corrugated, translucent panels mounted on rooftops could be used to bend sunlight into places it normally doesn't reach. Researchers from Ain Shams University in Cairo found that the new panels could be used in any country as a greener, cheaper, and more pleasant alternative to artificial light, particularly in urban side streets and alleys. While other commercially available window-like devices can redirect light, they are designed for shade and redirecting glare or for brightening a room, not a narrow street. The researchers have discovered how to redistribute natural light without the need for a tracking device that follows the sun. The researchers used a polymethyl methacrylate panel with ridges based on a sine wave with a smooth underside. Computer simulations helped them find the size and shape of the grooves that distribute the most sunlight in a wide range of sun positions year-round. Using simulations of sunlight shining on an alleyway, they found that these panels increased illumination by 200% in autumn and 400% in winter. They also tested a smaller prototype and found that it lit up the area as designed. The researchers now plan to build a full-scale model 10 times bigger to validate their calculations and test it in a real alleyway. This work is published in Optics Express. Some members of the Photonics Media team attended the annual Vision Show in Boston last week. Here's Laura Marshall with a wrap-up of this year's event. Thanks, James. Group publisher Karen Newman and I attended the Vision Show last Tuesday. The show was held at the Heinz Convention Center, which was also the site of that day's Boston Marathon Memorial events, and security was on everyone's minds. The keynote speech for the Vision Show was given by retired Army Colonel Dennis Treese, the former Chief Security Officer and Director of the Department of Corporate Security and Emergency Preparedness at the Massachusetts Port Authority. Treese first discussed the 2005 London bombing and how the terrorists were identified using images captured by public transportation surveillance systems. Then he looked at last year's marathon bombing and how public images, security cameras, and IR imaging systems helped authorities survey the scene, identify the terrorists, and ultimately apprehend Johar Tsarnaev. He distinguished between machine vision and security vision, which he defines as machine vision technology applied to security. The product of security vision is risk management via uncertainty reduction, he said, adding that decisions made with vision technology products are likely always better than those made without. Look at the way vision technology and its applications have grown just since 2005. A major current challenge Treese cited was using the images quickly enough. 
Treese listed vision technology from resolution to analysis, vision management including storage time and integration with other sensors, and policy issues including expectations of privacy as the three keys to the way forward. Our lives are going to change based on things that we can't even predict now, Treese noted, though Karen and I met with reps from companies who are probably working on predicting some of those things. We spent time with several companies on the show floor, including On Semiconductor, Teledyne Dalsa, Espros Photonics, Corning, and Fleora, and saw lots of exciting new technologies with applications in a huge range of fields. We didn't just talk about industrial vision or security, but also scientific uses and even entertainment applications like gaming and cinematography, which companies said are picking up today. That's not to say we didn't talk about uses in manufacturing inspection, defense, and traffic monitoring, too. We did, as those areas are still doing well. The buzzwords these days are still resolution, size, cost, and speed, but user friendliness is also ramping up as manufacturers and others look to reduce the training time required for use of vision products. That's it for this edition of Light Matters. Email us with your questions or comments at lightmatters at photonics.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.